So, we are discussing about machining fluids and uh, its properties, benefits. When you use these cutting fluids in the machining operation, what are the things that we are going to get benefit out of it? As well as if you do not use it, how the frictional coefficient goes high, then the power and other things goes high, so that the requirement will be very high and the losses will be more. So, now we will move on to the other part where we will study about the additives. What are the additives that are used in the cutting fluids? What are its properties? How this will affect various properties of the cutting fluid and how it will benefit the product and all those things we will see. So, the cutting fluid additives, there are many additives ranging from emulsifiers to the rust inhibitors and their mechanisms and all those things. So, if you see the cutting fluids, there are uh, two types of cutting fluids. Normally, metal working fluids are the broadly says this word, but uh, cutting fluids are specified words. So, cutting fluids are one part of uh, metal working fluids. Metal working fluids even metal forming also some of the greases they will use, some of the lubricants they will use, those are also come under the uh, metal working fluid. So, cutting fluids is subset of the metal working fluid. In the cutting fluids, where are, there are the oil based cutting fluids and the water based cutting fluids. So, in the water based cutting fluids, we all because since we are talking about the water based, because the water based will give you the better cooling ability for that purpose we always go for water based. In the water based, we have so emulsion based and uh, we have solutions, but normally we just go to the emulsion type mostly. So, the additives normally whatever we use are the commonly used by the people, operating people are extreme pressure additives, anti wear residue, friction modifiers, emulsifiers, biocides, corrosion inhibitors or rust inhibitors anti-foam, anti-fogging, some of the things are commonly used, names only, okay. anti-foam are the another one. If you see the cutting fluid composition structure, what are the things it will have? It will have a base what that is called the mineral oils or you can say the asters and uh, second followed by the emulsifiers, normally sulfonates, soaps, synthetic tensides, these are all the some of the examples that uh, will normally blend with the cutting fluid. The third one is corrosion prevention. For the corrosion prevention normally corrosion inhibitors are used which are again sulfonate soaps, amines, fatty acids and amides group. pH regulators, pH regulators is required because if the pH goes up and down, so then there is a chances of uh, metallurgical changes on the product because of the, the change in pH, the it will cause us the uh, metallurgical changes because of the high temperature that is there in during the machining operation and all those things. So, wear protection normally tool wear one has to protect for that purpose mineral oil sisters again you can see it is a normally lubricant based particles you can use are dominating character that means that you can use less amount of water in the composition and all those things. Biocides normally biocides are used for the uh, formation of microbial organisms in the cutting fluids. So, anti foaming agents normally anti foaming agents are used uh, such as silicon oil, wax, emulsions and all those things. These are used to not generate the foam during the machining operation. If the uh, foam takes place what will happen the visibility goes up and there is a disturbance in the machining operation also causes that is why normally anti foaming agents are used. So, emulsifiers just we get into the emulsifiers, what are the emulsifiers, how these are going to help and all. These are the major thing that the cutting fluid consists whenever you mix it is uh, emulsifiers. Emulsifiers are substances which reduce the surface tension at the interface of two normally immiscible phases allowing to mix. What will when there are two phases assume that there is a oil, you have a oil, you have a water, if you are going to mix these are not going to mix because they have their different surface tensions. Whenever you mix the emulsifier, what will happen? This emulsifier will reduce the surface tension between these two. That means, the relative surface tension that probably like the higher surface tension material, surface tension will be 
reduced and brought near to the lower surface tension so that both will become miscable that is what the intention of using the emulsifier. Emulsifier belongs to general class of compounds which are called as surfactants actually ok emulsifier ok whenever you are talking about the surface tension re reduction so these are used as a surfactants ok. So, the other name also is called surfactant. If you see here you have a water, you have oil, whenever you use the surfactant, surfactant will have the polar group and non-polar group. So, polar group will try to attach to the polar group that is called H2O and non-polar group will attach to the tail that is uh, oil non-polar group. So, you have a head that is polar and a tail non-polar. Okay. So, what is polar and what is non-polar? Some, some people may be from B type, they may know what is polar, what is non-polar. So, let me explain about polar molecules and non-polar molecules and all those things. In the polar molecules, that means that since a emuls emulsifier has both polar and non-polar head, so what the polar head is going to do is, electrons are not equally shared, that is why you can see here, em the not shared equally. So, one some plus minus are not constant there. One part of the molecule is more negative than one po another part of molecule. So, that means that some part will have more negativeness, some part will have less negativeness and all those things. There will be a difference between these two things. These are commonly hydrophilic means what I will tell you in the upcoming slides. What is hydrophilic, what is hydrophobic and all those things. So, this will take care of the water content polar molecule. The non-polar molecules electrons are equally shared. So, electrons are equally shared in the non-polar region and no part of molecule is distinctly negative or positive. So, that means that there is no much differentiation between any part of this non-polar region in a molecule. So, normally these are all hydrophobic. So, water fearing and uh, this hydrophilic means water loving. So, it will love. So, the hydrophilic means it will the spread assume that I have a surface of hydrophilic surface on which if I put water it will love that means that it will spread easily in a hydrophobic means you just fear. So, it is not like uh, assume that a particular person for example, common example of the phobia if you see if there is a diagnosis of CT scan there will be a cylindrical hole big hole will be there. So, some people may fear inside going that is called phobia. So, you do not want to go that means that whenever the water falls on the hydrophobic surface it will not it do not want to spread on that one just let me go away by so it will be having a, a spherical type of ball and it will goes off example is lotus leaf that is called a hydrophobic surface basically. Okay. This is about the uh, mechanism. However, we will go into the complete mechanism. When a surface active emulsifier is used to combine with water and oil, if you see in the picture, so normally these blue circles, these blue circles are nothing but your polar molecules is attached to the water. That means, this blue one is water, this is oil. So, while the non-polar tails that is black lines which are there inside the yellow region are attracted to an oil allowing the water to combine. This means combine. Anyhow, you will see another picture. You will have water and oil initially. Assume that I am mixing water and oil. So, this surface tension is different and viscosity is different and the density of these fluids are different. Whenever you add both these things, what will happen? It will be separate entity. One is this one, another one is this one. Okay. These are separate entities. When you add emulsifier, so what will happen? This has a polar head and non-polar tail. This will go and occupy uh, their respective regions. It's polar go and occupy the polar regions that is water and it will disintegrate the oil molecules and it form a emulsion. Okay. Emulsion does not mean that it is a uniform fluid. It may be a uniform fluid, but the thing is that these interfaces are still existing. That means that I mean to say water is a uniform thing. I am not saying whenever you mix water with oil, it is not that single entity. It is a dual entity which where is the two things are there, but 
uniformly dispersing in if you don't add it is non uniform dispersing if you add the oil and water will have uniform dispersing that is the what i mean to say okay so now you can see the surfactant and oil normally surfactant is nothing but one of the emulsifier whenever you are mixing with this water aqueous solution so initial system normally what will happen once you have a surfactant plus oil is there just you put into the water what will happen this oil molecules which are surrounded by the surfactants will try to pull into the water because it is water loving assume that these polar molecules are water loving molecules this will try to go into the water whenever you want to go now it will disintegrate this disintegrate and form a uniform dispersion that is what you can see here the surfactant moves to the water face so the surfactant that polar head tries to move into the water face that's why it will gradually become these type of things okay so and uniform so on last what will happen it will become anyhow it is mechanism is shown here however it is a nano emulsion is taken from the google but how the emulsification takes in the water and oil emulsions so that's mechanism that i want to show okay you have a water wherein you put the oil and you put the uh, surfactant or emulsifier then you just stir it the polar head will drag the non polar end uh, a group of polar ends will go by disintegrating from the oil molecule and form at a different different uniform locations to make a uniform emulsion that is called liquid liquid emulsion there is a slight difference between colloid and uh, emulsion yes i will come so i was talking about hydrophobic and hydrophilic surfaces and all those things emulsifier reduces the surface tension between two immiscible faces due to their molecular structure actually okay because of their molecular structure that is called polar and non polar they have both polar group and affinity towards water that is called non polar group which is affinity towards okay and forms the molecule so what is hydrophobic and hydrophilic okay so there is a concept called hydrophobic hydrophilic super hydrophobic and super hydrophilic these all depend on surface to liquid interactions basically if you see here if the angle is less than 10 degrees what will happen it is called super hydrophilic surface you can see here how the water molecule is spreading on the surface this is the surface on surface it is there normally the contact angle uh, will be measured from water to the free surface so assume that i have a surface like this on top of it i have a droplet here so how do i measure i measure like this water to the free end okay this is my contact angle that is how the contact angle is measured using goniometer there are uh, normally contact angle measurements are there which is one type of his uh, goniometers and all those things then comes hydrophilic surfaces that is called the if the angle is between 10 to 90 degrees then it is called hydrophilic surface hydrophobic surface ranges from 90 to 120 degrees hydrophobic surface if you see it will be and super hydrophobic surface will be like more than 120 degrees if the contact angle is more than 120 degrees that means that if the water droplet falls on that surface what will happen it will roll and it goes off example is your lotus leaf if the rain falls on a lotus leaf what will happen these droplets are the spherical droplets as soon as it falls what will happen they it will disintegrate because of the kinetic energy which is its possesses and it will these droplets will just if it is a inclined surface uh, if the leaf is slightly inclined what will happen it will spherical bubbles will just go so because it is hydrophobic surface 
it will fear it won't have love towards the lotus leaf surface that is called hydrophobic surface so we now move to the emulsifier reduces surface tension between two immiscible fluid due to their molecular structure lipophilic tails are composed of uh, normally c16 that is a longer fatty acids what is lipophilic tails lipophilic tails means lipophilic means these fluids will mix with oils it don't mix with water it will mix with oils that's why lipophilic tails if you see here what will happen this is a polar and this is a non polar non polar will mix with oil this this particular part will mix with oil that is why it is called lipophilic tail normally it has longer fatty acids polar head groups may consist of anionic cationic or non anionic functional groups okay this polar head can be anionic non anionic or cationic what is non anionic it is uh, no negative and positive charges in the functional groups okay there is no negative charge and there is no positive charge okay so the presence of both regions allow emulsifier to orient it the face at the interface as well as lower interfacial energy that leads to instability what it means is it has a flexibility you have seen in the previous slide where if you are mixing a surfactant or emulsifier along with the water what will happen whenever you mix it depend on its orientation polar and non polar it will disintegrate and form its own fluid you can say emulsifier stabilizes by monomolecular interfacial films and also formation of uh, electric barriers to prevent the coherence of the dispersed droplets if you don't use the emulsifiers what will happen this particular oil molecules will join assume that i have two oil molecules three oil molecules which are there in the water solution in a water solution what will happen these try to move each other and form a big droplet that is what you can see here there is a non uniform droplets there is no uniform droplet there are also small ones are there there are big ones are there and all those things what what the statement says this this disperse droplets so form the electric barriers to prevent the coalition this it has to prevent how it will prevent because it has a polar end which pulls towards the water what i mean to say is if i have a molecule bigger molecule is there if i am having this surfactant on top of it what will happen this move towards water assume that this is completely water filled it will move towards the water this also move towards water this also move towards water this also move everybody move towards water then this will disintegrate into different different molecules oil molecules so so that the uniform emulsion takes place the coalesce do it will prevent the co coalesce that means that oil particle to oil particle joining it stops like if you use the emulsifiers you can still may not get 100% uniform but you will get better than if you don't use the emulsifier that you can clearly see from this picture picture 2 you understood coalesce it will prevent by pulling towards the water side properties of emulsifiers normally it should have good solubility in base oil base oil means if you can mix with base oil then you can mix with water or you can normally the cutting fluids or the lubricant whenever you purchase from the market it will be already blended inside the mineral oil so that means that it should be completely lipophilic lipophilic as i said that this completely emulsions are lipophilic it should uniformly mix with an oil whenever you mix into the water then only it will disintegrate so these are good stability in the base oils good lubricating properties if already mineral oil will have lubricating property if you have still more better lubricating property then that will enhance the performance good dermatological and toxicological properties that means that whenever the operator operates this one and the cutting fluid is falling because of the rotation of the workpiece what will happen it will splashes on the 
operator it should be friendly to the dermatological surface of the operator that means that if it falls on the surface of this hand or face or something it should be friendly it should not deteriorate or it does not cause any type of discomfort to the operator and toxicological any type of toxins it should not produce if it produce assume that the operator inhales or if it falls on the surface if it is toxic then it will create lot of problem so it should not be toxicological and it should not be dermatological it should have better properties i mean to say it's low foaming in tendency it should not form become the foam it if it is foam what will happen then the visibility of the operator towards the machining may be opaque so it may not uh, give good look what is happening there and all those things so this is the problem and heat stability should be there it should not fluctuate and it should have uniform heat stability if it is at heat stability that means that it it cannot disintegrate into thing that means whenever this cutting fluid falls what will happen assume in a flood cooling prop uh, process where 400 to 600 ml per minute is falling in that circumstances every molecule of the cutting fluid may not go into the cutting region there will be 10 to 15% will go and the remaining just it fall and it will go into the cutting fluid tank for the recirculation that means that this 10% to 15% will have only thermal cracking will takes place because your cutting fluid is a petroleum product or it is a carbon based compounds so there is a cracking will takes place chemical cracking will takes place because of the temperature so this cutting fluid will go and affect the virgin cutting fluid that is falling in the uh, then it will its in, its uh, heat stability will go down so that's why whenever i am speaking about here it is i am speaking about the first time whenever i am using cutting fluid if you recycle it what will happen it its heat stability will goes off partially goes off so the heat stability will go on reducing if you are recycling again and again and again many times if you are recycling then stability may go down but first time whenever you use it should have a good heat stability okay. classification of emulsifiers if you see the classification of emulsifier normally monomolecular film is there another one is multi molecular film is there solid particle film also is there okay if you see the monomolecular film as you have seen if it is in water this is the water region and this is the oil region and you can form a monomolecular film that is called co coherent monomolecular film you can form here that is called whatever the point here is said is here and a flexible film formed by the sulfonated acid so that means that the film is flexible enough and can prepare oil in water or water and oil emulsions you can make two types of emulsion either in oil in water or water in oil what is water in oil and oil in water we will see in the upcoming slides lower surface tension and increase the stability of emulsion the surface tension it lowers the surface tension of the oil or another fluid which is about to mix two fluids whichever having the higher surface tension it will reduce to bring to the second one and try to mix it example potassium laureate is the one thing potassium polyoxyethylene sorbitan is another monoiliate is the another one so these are the two examples of monomolecular film based emulsifiers okay multimolecular films emulsifier strong and rigid form the mostly by the hydrocolloid as i said colloid emulsifier is liquid to liquid here if it is semi solid to liquid or solid to liquid normally it is called as colloid hydrocolloids normally if you might people might have heard about hydrogels gelatin hydrogels peg hydrogels pla hydrogels or peg pla peg hydrogels there are hydrogels hydrogel so you have a sphere wherein the water is bounded by the structure interlinking of this is nothing but the hydrogel it will have hydro that means water will be there it will be in a network form if you can cut you cannot see that one it will be embedded in the polymer networks okay, that is about the colloid produces oil in water emulsion 
this normally produces the only one type that is called oil in water emulsion it may not be vice versa have no effect on the surface tension so it will have the lower effect on the surface tension that means that it will may not form the emulsion properly because it may not reduce the surface tension as i expected or a person that is going to mix is expected so acecia is the one thing and gelatin is another thing if you can see multi molecular you can see all the things are on the surface it is not there in the inside the surface okay this is how about the multi molecular will takes place and solid particle films films formed by the solid particles that are uh, small in size compared to the droplet of the dispersed phase these are the solid particles that uh, forms on the surface can form oil in water and water in oil emulsion both are the emulsions it can form particle must be wet in both phases in order to remaining the interface of the that means that it should be wet if a particle is there it should wet from the oil side it should wet from the liquid that is water side also so it should be able to wet on the both sides for example graphite is one of the example bentonite is another example these are the examples of the emulsifiers so you can see oil in water emulsions oil in water emulsions is uh, one type of thing and the second one is water in oil emulsions multiple emulsions and micro emulsions these are the different varieties of emulsions are there if you see water in oil emulsion it is look like this anyhow i will show you a bigger picture in not this one just you will come across in the next slide or something this is called water in oil emulsion these are the water molecules blue one are water molecules here the orange one is oil which is a continuous phase and the dispersed phase is water oil in water here oil oil is uh, spheroids spir and uh, water is there in the continuous phase water in oil emulsion oil is the dispersion medium and the water is the dispersed medium okay see water in oil that means it is simply shows oil is my continuous phase and i am putting water in it okay that's as simple so in this one oil is a dispersion medium where is is the continuous medium water is just dropped in these are greasy not water washable what will happen whenever these are emulsions are also used in washing industry these are also used in many many industries such as paste industries emulsions are used uh, detergent liquids nowadays uh, these are used and all those things used externally to provide the cooling effect normally this also helps in the cooling effect why i am saying is you have oil which is a better lubricant whenever if you want a cooling ability what do you do you cannot use directly you have to mix water if you mix water cooling ability will as from the curve of uh, lubrication versus uh, the cooling you see the water is a better coolant so you have to mix it if you mix it water your cooling ability will increase evaporation of the moisture from the surface like skin it normally this also will use in the cold cream so evaporation of the moisture will takes place that means water content is very less so it will goes off if the temperature increases and prefer for external use like creams and all those things normally water content will be very less and oil content is major content which is a continuous phase whenever you apply on this ice cold creams and all those things water will goes off that is what it says so these are the one varieties that will normally use in the metal cutting also for analogy purpose we are taking from the creams and all those things if you can see oil droplet that is called the oil in water this is the continuous phase water is the continuous phase that is dispersion medium and oils are dispersed inside okay and this oils along with the uh, surfactants it will disintegrate and forms another one okay see oil heat it is oil and this is the water water molecules only thing you just clearly observe 
where the polar side of emulsion is sticking. Water molecule if it is here, your polar head is sticking to that one. If you see in this first figure, non-polar is sticking. Okay. Polar always with water, non-polar always with lipophilic that is called with oil. That is about the water in oil, oil in water emulsions. In oil, oil in water emulsion, water is the dispersion and oil is the dispersion. That means that you have a water wherein you are putting a oil. That means that I have a water in a glass, just I am putting a coconut oil to it, some drops of coconut oil to it. Non-greasy and easily removable to skin because main content is water. So, you just wipe off, it will goes off and used externally provide the cooling effect that is called varnishing. That means that you have a major amount of water is there. So, it will be dominating cooling effects for the cutting fluids. Preferred in internal use as a bitter taste oil can be masked. So, that means that normally this is also used in the toothpaste applications and all those things. Slightly it will be give the bitter taste. If you see how the oil in water, water in oil looks like, these are the droplets. If you are not going to use emulsifiers, you will have different sizes. You can see the different sizes will be there and this is about water in oil where these blue ones are water and these particles are oil, yellow ones are oil. So, this is about oil in water, water in oil emulsions. Now, we will go to multiple emulsion. So, what do you mean by multiple emulsions? You have water and oil, both two things are there. There are still more advanced things are there that is called oil in water in oil, water in oil in water. So, we will go through it. The multiple emulsions are emulsion system in which dispersed phase contain the smaller droplets that possesses the same composition as external phase. That means, the internal structure and completely external structure will have the same. That means, water in oil in water. So, water is there inside, oil is there on top of it, again water will be there. That is called you can see the multiple emulsions called in two ways oil in water in oil, water in oil in water. So, these are two types of emulsions are there. If you see the picture, you can clearly understand how this will be. For example, I will take the water in oil in water emulsions. If you see same like uh, continuous phase is water and uh, inter internal phase again will be water. If it is there is a water in and if you take a spheroid which is the oil inside again water will be there. Okay. That is called water inside the oil and on top of it you have a water again. Okay. That is what the uh, this one. So, micro emulsions is another one. Normally micro nano if you go the basic advantage that you will get is surface area will be large. So, if you have a more surface area what will happen suspending inside the liquid or inside any fluid will be easy that is what the advantage that is why people nowadays talk about micro emulsions, nano emulsions and all those things. So, many somebody may be interested in taking up the this cutting fluid with the micro emulsions, nano emulsions and you can check the performance. You have a cutting fluid which you made of your own or you purchased it. Just you take emulsions, different emulsions, you can mix it. If there is no emulsion pre added or blended with the existing one, otherwise, you can take any type of oils. Normally, I said the a environmental friendly oils like coconut oil, castor oil, neem oil, or so, so, so many oils are there. You just take the oil, you just try to get the suitable emulsifiers and mix with the water if this mix with this oil then you mix with the water and you can make your own cutting fluids okay but make sure that it is com chemically compatible and uh, don't uh, change its ph and all those things if it is there then it will be obviously a problem for machining operations that's why what i mean to say is that then you can for the same composition of oil and water you mix micro emulsions. I mean to say you have a oil, you have a water. So, you mix micro emulsions and test the performance. You mix the nano emulsions and check the. Okay. 
so you have a cut oil you have a water you mix first in the oil normal emulsions mix with water then you test your metal cutting per properties i means what is the performance of this one then instead of emulsion you mix micro emulsions and mix with water and you just check nano emulsions again with water and you check so is there any difference you are finding that can be a good work so you can take up clear stable just let me uh, introduce i am not going to introduce about the nano emulsions i just tell you about the micro emulsions these are clear stable liquid mixtures of oil water and surfactant frequently in the combination of with the co surfactant these are one type of surfactants which are clear stable and liquid mixtures of oils within the oil it will be there in contrast to the ordinary emulsions micro emulsions form upon simple mixing of the component and do not require high shearing conditions that means that you just put it and you may not be required to stir it with the very high loads and all those things you need normal stirring is also is sufficient to mix it because it is easily mixable in the cutting fluid because of its high surface areas and the suspending is very easy mixing is easy and proper and all those things so what are the differences between emulsions and micro emulsions the many differences are there appearance wise optical isotropy interfacial tension and all those things normally if you see the first and foremost thing that normally you see is droplet size droplet size normally in a emulsion it will be greater than 500 nanometers but if you see some of the other papers normally this range they will tell is 1 to 10 micrometers and all those things some other people other this micro emulsions are in the range of 220 to 200 nanometers or slightly above plus or minus 10 or plus or minus 20 will be there interfacial tension second thing that you can see here interfacial tension is emulsion high here it is ultra low so interfacial tension is low means it is easily miscable and all those things remaining all viscosity and uh, if you see emulsions are high viscous and these are low viscous if you see low viscous what will happen it is better so it will be easily miscable if you have high viscous that is honey it is high viscous if you put a spoon and if you rotate you need lot of energy if you put water it's the same amount of water in a glass and if you rotate you can rotate easily that's called the resistance to flow is very high if the viscosity goes up that is what it says this is the difference between the emulsions and micro emulsions i am not touching all the things uh, anyhow you can study from this slide so water soluble miscible fluids if you see the types general purpose soluble oils emulsifier oils are uh, different types that has uh, used is dilutant between normally the range between 1 is to 10 to 1 is to 40 to give milky emulsions normally used in for the general purpose machining operations these are all general soluble oils so that ranges from 1 is to 10 to 1 is to 40 dilution that means that you have a 1 1 liter of your fluid is there cutting fluid or uh, mineral oil is there 10 liters of water if you want to mix this general purpose oils can be you if a clear type of soluble oils used dilution between 1 is to 50 to 1 is to 100 their emulsifier content results in emulsion which very translucent that is clear and used in grinding and uh, heavy duty machining operations these are all used for heavy duty applications like where the sir u uh, u is nothing but uh, surface uh, requirement energy required per unit volume where is very high there you can use fatty soluble oils normally these are used where again for uh, general purpose like 1 is to 10 to 1 is to 40 and extreme pressure soluble oils these are all used for very low that is between 1 is to 5 to 1 is to 20 but where higher performance than the other 1 to 3 is required that means higher performance wherever you require like uh, very big big loads are there and all those things in that applications extreme pressure soluble oils are normally used all these oils are use is a part of uh, emulsifier or you can add emulsions to these oils okay 
So, next we will move on to extreme pressure additives. What is this extreme pressure additives and all those things we will see. So, extreme pressure additives uh, work reacting with a metal form a compound that reacts the protective layer on the metal surface. Since this layer is softer than metal and at extreme pressure conditions it wears off protecting the metal. That means, whenever extreme pressure additive is added to the cutting fluid if it is false during the machining operation what will happen it forms a layer that is soft compared to my parent material of that material. And whenever there is a pressure that falls or shearing takes place what will happen that soft layer will goes off by keeping the original metal layer intact that is what extreme pressure additives will do. This layer is removed and extreme pressure to act as a form another layer. What I mean to say is that since my cutting fluid is continuously falling if one extreme pressure additives layer which is soft gone automatically it is falling. So, it will form another layer that is what it mean to say. In contrast to action to anti wear additives extreme pressure should control the wear instead of preventing it. It will control the wear that means as I said it forms continuously the softer layer on the metal layer. So, that it would not damage my the to assume that tool is there and cutting uh, work piece is moving on. So, if I have a cutting fluid continuously falling even though it takes off only and it forms a soft layer extreme pressure diffuse it will take off again since the cutting fluid is there around continuously falling it will form another layer and it will control the wear up to certain limit it would not prevent or something it cannot prevent, but it will control up to certain limit. So, if you see here what will happen this is a surface where uh, some of the metal surface it will form on the soft layer will form on this one. If this soft layer goes off again soft layer will come. If you see in the tribological wear where the soft layer will be formed on this one and soft layer will goes off whenever there is a sliding because of certain normal load also is there. So, what will happen the soft layer will goes off and soft layer will be uniformly it goes off it will form it goes off it will form. So, again it will goes off. So, that is the beauty about this one in the tribological aspect. Added fluids where the cutting fluid the forces are particularly high such as tapping and broaching operations these are applied for heavy load processes where the cutting forces are high like broaching operation. You need to have lot of forces during the machining operation. So, even though it forms soft layer the soft layer because of the heavy loads may take away and still have it forms its own layer. High pressure additives provide tougher more stable form of lubrication at the chip tool interface. That means, it will form a stable soft layer continuously till the cutting fluid fall in that area. Extreme pressure includes sulfur, chlorine and phosphorus compounds. These react at a high temperature in cutting zones to form metallic sulphates, chlorides and phosphates. What will happen? These are all made up of sulfur, chlorine or phosphorus compounds. These compounds will react in the machining region where the temperature is very high and form metallic sulphates, metallic chlorides and metallic phosphate. This will form and it will give the soft layer. Provide extreme pressure lubrication that is always the soft layer will be cushioning it will give the lubrication like a cushioning and all those things. Also provide a film that tool surface with anti weld properties to minimize the built up edge that means what will happen it will form in and if it is soft layer is forming there is no formation of built up edge on top of it. If instantaneously there is a molten metal that is sticking to the surface from the chip back side on to this one. Since there is a high pressure additive which form a soft layer on this one what will happen it may not directly contact with my tool material. So, at certain point of time it may goes off. So, there is no formation of built up edge continuously if it falls if the soft layer do not have energy soft layer will goes off and because of the cutting fluid intake is regular. So, another soft layer will form. So, there is no possibility of forming the built up edge. The possibility I cannot say 100 percent is not there I cannot say, but 
possibility will be the less possibility will be there the sulfurized fatty mineral oil blend have sulfur added in the strongly bonded inactive which may have totally non staining so there is uh, active if the stain copper based metals are normal room temperature that inactive mild if they do not stain that means that stain in terms of color change or something may not be dominating if you are using the this one that is about the non staining and staining so next we will move to anti foam additives anti foam additives that means that how we can prevent the foam formation the mechanism so you will have a bubble this is a bubble resin from surface foam inhibited droplets are there you can see in the yellow one you have a small 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 droplets are there black droplets are the black dots are there you can see these are the uh, things and um, when the bubble wall interact with the foam inhibitor droplet what will happen this foam inhibitor which is a particle which will blast the bubble just you can see here this is blasted the or it will penetrate into this one because of its nature and the bubble formation will not take place what i mean to say in the oil i have already anti foaming agents which are located like a black black dots whenever the bubble formation is taking place this black dots goes and pinches it and the bubble will blast and there is it is a continuous process wherein the bubble formation will be there and this will go and punch it and make became the liquid so that is about the mechanism of anti foaming additives how it will act as a anti foaming you can see without uh, anti foam additives you can see the bubble formations are there and all those things here so in the with anti foam additives there is no bubble, bubble formation here it is a very smooth in and they have you can also see without normally there is a bubble formation you can see the white 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 bubbles are there formed here if you with anti foam additives this will continuously punches the foam so there is no bubbles in this region that's if there is no bubbles in the vicinity of the metal cutting region what will happen it will have the operator will have can easily see and there is no uh, much fluctuation if there is a gas bubble means it is having gas inside and uh, the barrier is there oil barrier is or liquid barrier is there what will happen if these are more the cutting fluid which is coming back from the back it may not allow also so there are some drawbacks are there for which normally anti foam additives are used mechanism of anti foam additives used is hydrophobic silica is one of the material that is used you have seen already however i am going to explain you again so you mix anti foam hydrophobic silica in the oil then you just mix with the water what will happen this will if there is a bubble in the water it will go and punch and it will remove that so some of the rapid spreading of the oil thin walls and silica particle punches it if it punches so the air bubbles will goes off come of the common names are polydimethyl siloxane is one of the example polyethylene glycol and polyacrylates are another one silicon oil is another common example commonly using anti foam agents and silicon glycol sodium nitrite hydrophobic silica you can see this hydrophobic silica is there and which is also there here okay so it will punches long chain fatty acids soaps or esters also will be used and fluorosilicons will be used these are the some of the names of the anti foam agents simple fundamental it will go and punch puncture the bubbles so that the bubbles amount will be reduced 100% not you can reduce up to certain limit this is about the anti foam agents now we are moving to another additive of the cutting fluid that is another most important 
additive that is called biocides. As I said, whenever a workshop is there or a laboratory is there, the cutting fluids are used continuously again, again and again. What will happen? They are, you have 1 liter of cutting fluid or mineral oil where you are using 10 liters of water in it. And do you use circulate for 2 months or 3 months? Assume that if a water is there, can you drink after 2 months? No, no, because microorganisms will form on it. If you drink, it will have a harm effect on your health. So, for example, if you see your uh, tetra packs or any juice packets and all those things, they will have preservatives. Why the preservatives are normally used? Normally preservatives are used to enhance the life of that particular juice packet. If you see the real uh, Tropicana and all those things. Some of the people nowadays are not using the preservatives. If you see the Amul milk or some of the like some places if you see there is nothing like uh, there is things like for example Tropicana 100 percent. So maybe they are not using the preservatives. Only. What is the use of preservatives? Preservatives preserve this for more life. Assume you are making an orange juice in your home. Can you drink after 5 days? Not possible because it will affect by the microorganisms which are there in the atmosphere and it will destroy the orange juice. For that purpose, same thing if you think in terms of uh, cutting fluid in the workshop. As I said, you have a composition of 1 is to 10 where 10 is stands for 10 liters of water, your cutting fluid fall it will go up back, your machining process is completed, you go back to the cutting fluid tank, tomorrow you will come again you operate, again it will go to the tank, again you are using, 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 if you do not use biocides, what will happen? There will be a fungal formation, there will be a bacterial formation or multiple, commonly I can say that microbial formation will be dominating in the cutting fluid. In order to prevent that, or in order to reduce that, normally biocides are used. That is the function of the biocides. Going into the biocides, whatever the picture that I am showing, showing is a, for the grease, just I want to show you the how the bacterial formation takes place. For that purpose, so your grease is one type of lubricant. If it you are taking as a grease, it is a lubricant. Lubricants also you can get in form of mineral ions also. Rancidity is nothing but your unpleasant odor. Whenever if you are using again and again, whenever it is destroyed, what will happen? Automatically the smell will go up. So you cannot bear the smell also. Rancidity causes by the bacteria and other microscopic organisms growing, eventually causing the bad odors to form. So, most of the cutting fluid contains bactericides that is called biocides that control the growth of bacteria and make the cutting fluids more resistant to rancidity. That means, your cutting fluids are subjected to or affected by the bacteria. If at all I want to protect from bacteria, you have to use bactericide. That is for regarding the bacteria as concerned. If at all fungus is there, you have to use according to that. You have some other organism is there, you have to use that. If you mix all these for the bacteria, for fungus, for other some microorganisms, you will use biocide. Biocide means if there is a living organism, I want to prevent that one, you will use the biocides. You can see here how these are all forming and you can see the local colony of this bacteria, how the bacterial forming here on long term usage of this one. So, biocides defined as a active substances which have an active agent or a harmful organism against harmful organism. It will act against any living organism which is harmful to the system, cutting fluid it will act. Biocides are clear colorless and odorless liquid it are used to prevent the order. So, the first thing is that it should not give any order. For that purpose, it is always odorless liquid. It do not have its own smell. 
the miscible with water and a range of polar organic solvents such as ethanol and it will be miscible with water with oil and other things there is no problem of mixing of this biocides for example there is a commercially available protectol p is there is moderate active against the broad range of microorganisms normally there are many type of biocides are there among which this is one type this you can apply for many varieties of cutting fluids that is called broad range of microorganisms that are commonly growing on the cutting fluid this region often used in the combination with other active ingredient activity of board ph range which means that the product can be used wide variety of formulation types this can be used for variety of cutting fluids where different types of microorganisms are formed and the ph if the microorganisms grows the ph will change so that if by i am using the biocide of this protectol p what will happen it will control the ph by killing the microorganisms protectol h t is another one which is a trademark of the same company chemically it is called hexahydrotriazone and rated as a active substance normally this is another synonym for it which is a very weak so you can shortly call it at hexahydrotriazine okay this will be slightly active compared to previous one release of formaldehyde is depend on the ph and temperature but general rule the lower temperature the lower the amount of formaldehyde and the addition the release of greater at the lower ph that means what will happen whenever you add there is a formaldehyde release c will takes place the mechanism i will show you in the next thing i think uh, okay so whenever you add what will happen here is that uh, release of depend on the ph of that uh, certain fluid uh, this will also will change when whenever there is a temperature in the machining region goes up the formaldehyde releasing will also will take place okay so that's about the biocides different biocides are there these are the bactericides which prevent the bacterial formation then comes the fungicides if at all i have fungus it are to eradicate the fungus you will go for this type of uh, things so this will go for bacteria up to this one and the bottom one will be fungicides and the broad spectrum you will have uh, if at all i want to have to kill the microorganisms which have the bactericides fungicides and all those things you will go for the broad spectrum of the materials okay these are all the chemical names so as a mechanical engineer you need not to buy hard for the examination or something you should know the basic what is a bactericide what is a fungicide and uh, how the it will going to kill and all those things okay so that's about the biocides another important addition to the cutting fluid is rust inhibitors so the rust inhibitors means whenever the machining operation is going on if the cutting fluid contains 1 is to 10 assuming 10 liters of water the water will fall on the machining zone where the temperature is high and assume that i have a work piece of iron based work piece in that circumstances rust formation on my product that is coming out from the machining region is one of the problem so how to prevent for that purpose you should always try to have the rust inhibitors in the cutting fluid or rust inhibitor should be pre blended in the cutting fluid so that this rusting effect will not takes place okay so water is the best and most economical coolant okay because it is freely available at the same time cost free and it has if you see the graph it has a better cooling ability if you see the graph like uh, lubrication versus cooling abilities water stays here okay so for that purpose this is a better coolant and it has 
no charge okay so causes part rust normally if you are not going to use this part will cause the causes the rust formation rust in oxidized iron normally if you see in the upcoming slides also you can see whenever i said in the previous lectures also if you have a mild steel plate you just put in the, the at open atmospheric conditions rain falls and uh, air blows and on top of it and all those things rust will take place rust is nothing but oxide film takes place and it is easily erodible with a nail if you just scratch it it will goes off okay chemical cutting fluids contain the rust inhibitors normally synthetic and semi synthetic cutting fluids will basically contains this uh, rust inhibitor so these are in the polar form as i said polar non polar rheostate and it is form say passive passivating layer if you see a polar film and a passivating film negatively charged long thin molecules attracted and firmly bound on themselves on the metal that means if you are falling a polar film that means that polar head will go and stick on the surface so that it won't allow the water content to come okay so that is one one passivating film inhibitors combine the chemically with the metal uh, and form non porous protective coating that prevents the rusting okay so it will form a passive layer passivative layer means whenever you have rust inhibitors are there these rust inhibitors which just go and coat on top of it that means that it will go and sit on the top of it so that the water content uh, after that one if you are going to put this one in the open atmosphere also what will happen because of the moisture content in the water uh, in the air or the chemicals that are present in the air like oxygen and all those thing it will prevent from the rusting that is by making a passivating film modes of corrosion inhibition so there are some modes that is barrier protection just you form a barrier like uh, you just have a coating on top of it the water molecules will be there cathodic protection normally this is a chemical way of thing activate active corrosion inhibition anodic passivation and self healing and all that. these are the some of the chemical techniques where the anti rusting or rust inhibition will takes place the normally the some of the commonly used is barrier protection so barrier protection means just you have a passivate layer a layer will be there on top of it if the water falls also it it don't have much effect it will sit there is no direct contact between two surfaces okay there is no direct contact okay this is about uh, the anti rusting okay so surface integrity i was just talking about uh, surface integrity and surface roughness i have already taught you from, but i forgot to give you some of the glimpse that is called uh, surface integrity is the surface condition of the work piece being modified by the manufacturing process the term is coined by the michael field and john f kells in 1964 surface integrity means surface morphology plus surface metallurgy okay and this is about the surface integrity when i was teaching in the previous classes uh, i just forgot to give you the glimpse what is surface morphology this is surface morphology that means that how the surface look like and all those things this is about uh, how the surface morphology topography means outside how it looks like from outside anatomy means it is one of the subjects of medicos where they will read the sur- morphology and anatomy dissection and all those things are there okay so anatomy means inside we are not talking about inside we are talking about the external surface that is called this surface if you are talking how the morphology look like whether the nanotubes are formed and all those things the second this is about surface morphology if you see the surface metallurgy as i was telling the oxide rusting and all those things will takes place if you see here the rusting how the rusting is taking place and all those things this is called metallurgy even though the assume that you are going to measure in this region surface roughness 
you are going to get a good surface roughness, but your surface metallurgy is very poor. Okay. For a practical application, the surface roughness is also important on surface morphology, not only roughness, it appearance and all those things also important at the same time, metallurgy is also important. So, the surface uh, again just a glimpse, this is surface morphology. and this is surface metallurgy. You can see a chain on which how the rusting taken place. So, this is called surface metallurgy. Okay. So, you need both. If a machining operation is taking place, if you are not going to control the rusting the surface metallurgical point even though you got a better surface roughness or more morphology it is none of your application. It would not match to any of your applications. Whenever you put this product into the practical condition it may fail. That is why both are important. For that purpose you need to add a rust inhibitors to the cutting fluid. That is why whenever you are purchasing the cutting fluid you have to cross check the composition. Mineral oil is there, rust inhibitors are there, emulsifiers are there and many other biocides are there, are, there are minimum, but at the same time what is its quantity? Is it the quantity in a right amount or not? If it is not in a right amount then it will have a ecological problems. Okay. So, you should have always in the upcoming classes you will see if these additives in this class you have clearly seen the advantage of this uh, corrosion inhibitors, biocides and all those things, but you come across various disadvantages of these fluids in the upcoming classes where the emission this will cause a lot of dangerous emissions okay, that will hamper the operator, environmental pollution, water pollution and all those things for that purpose as a mechanical engineering, as a uh, manufacturing engineer, you should cross check whether the amount of this uh, ingredients are within the limit or not. As per your within the limit, it will give you better mechanical or manufacturing output that is good surface finish, forces less and all those things. At the same time, it should not operate the operator also. That is why you should take an uh, take the right amount. So, this is about the surface metallurgy and uh, surface morphological condition. Now, you see the cutting fluid cycle and ecological effects. Use of cutting fluid which will start after, after the machining what will happen? The contaminated cutting fluid will come. If you see the cleaning by the filtering operation or something what will happen? It will causes to the cost and energy if you are going to filter it. If you are not going to filter it then it will problem. So, contaminated cutting fluid if you see again it will causes the water pollution, again it will causes the soil pollution. These two increases the health problems and environmental problems. That is why the cutting fluids you should use minimum. You have studied about various techniques of cutting fluid application like uh, flood cooling, minimum quantity cutting fluid and all those things. You choose right option. If you are using like uh, atomizing type of thing during the machining operation, evaporation will takes place and operator diseases and all these things will cause. This is one of the cutting fluid cycle and its ecological effects. Why I am giving you this glimpse is in upcoming classes what we are going to see is the other side of the coin. The cutting fluid additives we have seen the advantages on one side these cutting fluids will have adverse effect drastically adverse effect on the other side okay. that we will see in the upcoming classes. So, the summary what we have seen in the previous class and this class need of machining fluids in the cutting fluids, introduction to cutting fluids and cutting fluids and its functions, types of cutting fluids and cutting fluid properties. These are all we have studied in the previous class. Cutting fluid additives elaboratively we have seen and cutting fluids ecological effects and all those things we have seen. Most importantly, 
we have studied about uh, emulsifiers, biocides, rust inhibitors, microemulsions, multiple emulsions, many things of type of uh, additives which we have used and this is a glimpse which we have taken from the one of the tribological where you can see the surface change if there is a particular surface is there how the contact angle changes that is about the hydrophobic hydrophilic surface example that is why I was telling you. Thank you for this class hope you understood uh, as much as possible because uh, it is involved some chemistry also where the names are very very big being a mechanical persons sometimes you may not get but however I try to explain the best level how to correlate the these fluids to our manufacturing or metal cutting applications. Thank you.